Guys, this is the how to build it video for the U-Rig Mechanical Advantage system. If you want to see, uh, get an introduction to the system and see it in application, surf over to Pocket MA for tree work. Here you're going to get a detailed comp components list and a special reeving technique that will show you how to get the system together quickly. All the components are purchased. Uh, we'll start with the cordage. The cordage is Sterling HTP. That's a static Kern mantle line with excellent efficiency for uh, rigging. Uh, 10 millimeters by 90 feet to a tight eye carrying a 25 kilonewton quick link. That's going to land on the becket of a Rock Exotica Omniblock, the P51D. And that's going to connect to a Rock Steel uh, stainless a rock D stainless, excuse me, uh, at the head end of the system. At the anchor end of the system, there are two Rock Exotica P22 pulleys, and there are two Rock O's, one of them plain, and one of them with the lanyard corner trap. And the anchor beaner is the Rock Steel 50 kilonewton beaner. Um, more strength than we need in the application, but it gives me a little more strength, a little more space to do uh, friction management with the working end of the line. There are two prussics in the system. The control prussic is ocean polyester, 10 millimeters by 28 inches, I beg your pardon, 8 millimeters by 28 inches to sewn eyes. That'll be deployed as a 5 over 1 swabbish. The load prusik is 8 millimeter Samson ice tail, 34 inches to sewn eyes, and that'll be deployed as a 4 coil 4 cross VT. The little beaner here is from DMM. Uh, it, it serves to lock out the load prusik when it's not needed in the configuration. That's the system. Some of you may notice from a prior video that the load prusik has gone over from a Kern mantle to a 12-strand hollow braid. Um, both of these uh, materials performed fine internally, but when the load prusik was rigged to an external rigging line, uh, for example, half-inch stable braid, we found that the Samson ice tail had a much kinder, gentler grip on the rigging line. Uh, we ran some brake tests, and uh, thanks again to Luke and Nick at uh, treestuff.com. Um, they uh, ran the tests, and the MBS of this connection jumped up some uh, nearly 50% over the prior uh, connection, so it was an easy choice to go to the uh, Samson Ice Tail. I'm going to take you through the traditional reeving sequence now, but I absolutely recommend that you do not build the system this way. In the final assembly, the reeving sequence will be that the cordage goes from your hand to the omni block, and then down to the anchor end to the upper pulley on the anchor end, through the control prusik, back up to the omni block down to the lower pulley on the lower on the anchor end through the load prusik and back up to the omni block to land on the becket when i try to reeve it that way it takes me the better part of a long weekend and it makes me crazy i'm going to give you a much better uh, technique for reeving it you'll be able to reeve the system in about 90 seconds less than 90 seconds plus the time it takes you to tie one or two uh, prussics, depending on what you're setting up for. So to begin that system, let's pre-rig some of the components. We'll put the quick link on the becket, and we'll open up the Omni block, and we'll put the head end beaner on the swivel of the Omni block. We'll take the plain rock O and put it through the corner trap of the lanyard rock O. And then we'll flip it around end for end so the two tails of the beaners touch each other. 
and then we'll load a P22 into the lanyard uh, beaner. Uh, the way I remember that sequence is that the plain beaner stays plain and the fancy beaner gets the fancy pulley. And then let's take the anchor beaner and hang it up somewhere convenient. We're going to reeve this thing upside down and then flip it right side up and uh, apply the prussix. So to begin, uh, grab the cordage and let the Omni block uh, hang in front of you. Take the other P22 and apply it to the cordage. Take your Rock O beaner and capture the pulley and the cordage in the Rock O and hold it up and look at it. What you want to see is the plain spine of the lanyard beaner facing the cordage that's dropping down to the Omni block. If you see the gate in this position, you have to back out what you've just done, flip it around the other way, and when it looks like this, you're good to go, and you can take it over to the anchor beaner and hang it up there, and while you're there, tie a little uh, slip knot to keep the cordage at a manageable length. As the cordage drops down to the Omni block, put it through either shiv, and click it closed, loop around the pulley to the other shiv, come through the same direction, and click it closed. And now you see we've formed two loops, a long loop and a short loop. And now we're going to take off the quick link from the becket, pull the short loop inside, put the quick link back on the becket, and tighten it down. And then we simply draw the short loop up. It'll be obvious where it needs to land. It's going to land on the P22. And as soon as you've got that rigged in there, you've completed the rigging and you can take out the stopper knot and flip the system right side up. Okay, now let's put the Prusix on. We'll start with the load prussic, the ice tail prussic. It's easy to see where that goes. You simply put your hand on the becket and slide down, and that's where you apply the 4 over 4 VT. Two, three, four. Okay, 4 over 4 VT. One, two, three, four. And now we want the eyes of that VT to land in the anchor beaner, one on each side of the P22. And when you dress that, you should count one, two, three, four coils and one, two, three, four crosses. And that's your load prussic. When you've got that set, you can collapse it and put the little DMM microbeaner onto the rock O and snap it onto the HTP above the load prussic. And then you see how that holds the load prussic from getting any traction and it'll keep it ready for when you need that uh, particular configuration. The other P22 will tend the control prussic and we need to identify the length of cordage that is escaping from the pulley while the load is escaping. The load is moving down and this cordage is trying to escape from the pulley. So that's, we're going to cut off that escape with the control prussic and we'll put in a 5 over 1 swabish, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The Swabish is a close relative of the distal, except both of the legs come out the same side of the Prusik. Um, here's our one, two, three, four, five over one. And when you're setting the Prusik, um, make the upper leg maybe a half an inch longer. And then bring those two eyes to the nose of the lanyard beaner and put them onto the beaner, put the eyes onto the beaner on the same side as the uh, existing P22. 
and now you're done. The system is ready to go. If you want to check your work on this, lengthen the system out a little bit and take a look at the cordage dropping from the head end. And what you should see is five strands of cordage with nothing touching and nothing crossing. This is one of the great advantages of this strategy of using uh, 90 degree cross axles on the anchor end. You get a really excellent rope geometry even in a system that is this compact. I really like this little rig. I, I should have built it years ago. Uh, but I have to tell you, it comes with a learning curve. Uh, I, I think that's because, in effect, you're having to learn how to manage three systems at the same time. I'm okay with that. I have an inner cheapskate up here that tells me I'm only having to pay for one system at the same time. So uh, I hope it works for you, and thanks for watching.